How's it guys? So today we're going to be doing something a bit differently. I have learned about something new that I thought I'd share with you guys as I love sharing new things with you. So we're going to do a quick two minute Tuesday. So it is called IBA, which stands for Impact Brain Apnea. I had never heard of this. Um, I actually found some literature that was pointing back to like years and years ago. So it's not new. I've just never come across it. So what impact brain apnea is exactly what it sounds like. When you have impact to your brain, it can produce apnea. So they're finding in trauma patients, specifically blunt force trauma to the head, where you have a traumatic brain injury, you can have a period of apnea after that impact. So what happens with these patients is that they get hit so hard that their brainstem resets. And so there's like no signs of life, no breathing, no movement. And the harder they get hit, the longer this period lasts. Other thing that happens is that there is a massive release of catecholamines, which would then cause hypertension and a tachycardia and a whole bunch of other issues I can assume. So why is this really interesting and why is this important? So what happens if we get to a mass casualty and there's 10 patients and one of them is not breathing and not moving and when we do a jaw thrust has no breathing, we classify them as dead. We're not even going to resuscitate them or look at them. But these patients with impact brain apnea will look exactly like that. So they are GCS3, they are flat, they're unconscious, they're not breathing, they're not moving, there's nothing going on, but they have a pulse. And so what happens is that if we actually ventilate these people and we oxygenate these people, they start to wake up and they can come back to talking and walking. You send them off to a CT brain and their scan comes back absolutely clear. And this has been documented quite well. I'll drop some links to the bottom. Depending on how hard you get hit, the apnea can be quite long. So I do understand that it takes medics and help to get to these sort of scenes longer than it would for someone to go into cardiac arrest due to apnea. However, if we are more aware of the fact that patients who are hit by cars or blunt force trauma to the head can cause apnea, the next time I come across someone who's unconscious, not breathing, no signs of life, I'm going to be far more careful about writing him off because, well, he's dead because he's not breathing. He could well just have impact brain apnea. So I thought that that was quite, quite fascinating. If you've never heard of this, I'd love for you to share it, like it, drop a comment. Thank you for your time. Stay well, stay safe. Bye for now.